Right folks, Simon Jordan on Jim Whitehill this morning on Talk Sport. They're debating the merits of bringing Graham Potter in at United to replace Eric Ten Hag, should Eric get fired. And I think the consensus is with most people, why would you do it? Why would you bring Potter in? And uh, Simon was very, very uh, forthright and very forceful on the fact that he thinks it might be a bridge too far for Potter, especially at this stage. Um, don't always agree with Simon, although I've said more often than not I do. And I did again. And I'll add a bit to that. This is my thoughts on it. I mean, I think he said, well, you know, he did brilliant at Brighton. Yes, he did. But he died a death at Chelsea. Was it because Chelsea was a step up? Because if so, United's a step up again. And I concur with that. Not just because I'm a United fan, but it is. The scrutiny on United is far greater than anyone else in this country. Even more than City. You know that by listening to talks, but on a daily basis, they're debating United more than most well more than anybody else probably more than everybody put together they have more callers in they devote more time to it they knock the club more than anybody else but he often deserves knocking them, which is why they do it but I will say this yeah Potter was fantastic at Brighton did a good job could be a very good manager but I would suggest you've got a fantastic board there run by uh, run looked up over by Tony Bloom who I believe is extremely clever really really shrewd and he's got the right board underneath him to run that club. You've gone to a club in Chelsea that's in flux and a bit of turmoil there. Abramovich, is, has he, had he left? It, was he leaving? I can't remember. I think he'd already left. But had he really? The rumours are they were still paying him off, although they shouldn't have been. You've got Bowley who's come in who doesn't know his backside from his elbow, um, spending all the money in the world on his own signings, not really listening to his manager, and just signing absolutely anybody for any amounts of money. And then, when he fails, he's out the game for a while, he's all Graham, and now, as I say, we're in, and there might be an interest from United, which would all be well and good had Potter done well at Chelsea, but as I say, he didn't, he didn't pull up trees at all. And he's always been a quiet manager, he's not your Jose Mourinho's, where you'd have nothing but hearing about himself, talking himself up, and, and having a pop here, there, and everywhere, because it's what Mourinho does. Potter keeps himself very much to himself, and I think at, at Chelsea, he did it even more so. He went very much into his shell, especially when the going got tough near the end. You earned nothing from him. I would suggest, if he struggled at Chelsea with a really poor board, come to Old Trafford Gray and we'll show you what a poor board's like. For the last 10 or 12 years, it's been run like a joke. Since David Gill's left, it's been an absolute joke, mainly because of the owners, but also of the board that they put in there. It's all been about commercial, it's not been about football. We told that Jim, old Jim Ratcliffe, is very clever, very shrewd and spot on. And he's going to bring his own people in. He's going to bring a sporting director in. And he's going to be, bring somebody in to really run the club from top to bottom. Now the guy he's bringing in is rumoured to be David Brailsford. Very successful guy and has worked with Jim in the past. But all I will say about David Brailsford is, they bring in Brailsford in, he was at the top of the tree in cycling. Manchester United is a football club. And he's coming in supposedly to run Manchester United. No background in football, or nothing to speak of. Massive background in cycling. The cycling front, he did very well, was he? With Sky GB, I think it was, or whoever. Did fantastic in lots of Olympics. Very, very good. At the end, was he in charge when it was, you know, when there were rumoured to be drug issues and, and brown parcel issues and all this, that, and the other? I think he was. I think he was part of it. They've tried to sweep it under the table for a few years, but I think he was he oversaw all that. I may be wrong. Um, so if I'm right, he's not sort of clean and green. Anyway, he may well be coming into United. He's going to run the club. No real football background. I think his remit is to look after the football side as much as the commercial side. Because over the last few years, the commercial side is all it's been and the football side overlooked, which is all well and good. I think Jim knows a fair bit about football for himself. For all he's, he's a boss at Ineos, I think he's a football fan at heart football supporter at heart, Man United fan at heart, which is all good, but I would suggest he's got that much on his plate, Jim, he's not going to be running United on a day-to-day -day basis, which is why he's looking at putting someone like Brailsford in charge, but I would guess Mr Potter's going to come up over to a club that's been run deplorably for many a year now, and how do we know it's going to be run any better with Brailsford? We just don't, we're not going to know till 6, 12 or 18 months in. Now, if you get rid of Eric, You've got to say, if you do get rid of Eric, there's been some mistakes made since Fergie left. You've gone through Moyes. Many would say the job was too big for wasn't good enough. You've had Van Gaal. 
who was very defensive, very, very boring, and didn't really get on with the press and was very aloof. You've had Mourinho, who's all about Mourinho, who loves to throw his players under the bus, and who just doesn't like to get on with anybody. He's proving that still in Roma. You've had Oli, who by all accounts, who we all wanted to succeed. I wanted him to be brilliant. I loved Oli. I love Oli. Um, but we believe very, very lax, very uh, unfirm handed, and let the players get away with murder. And I believe we're still suffering that, from that now. You've then had Ralph, which, you know, the shorts and thing just didn't, wouldn't, couldn't work. And then we've got Eric. And at this moment in time, I think we're winning one and two and losing one and two. It's a nightmare. No identity, don't know what we're doing. I've always wanted to keep him. Three four weeks ago, I wanted to get rid. Then I've gone back in the thing of wanting to keep him. I think the next sort of six weeks is going to show us whether or not he's worth keeping. And I hope he is. I want him to succeed. I want nothing but success for the club and for Eric Tenard. I like him as a bloke, but I do worry on lots, uh, lots of fronts at this moment in time. But if we're going to get rid of Eric, do we want Graham Potter, a guy who in his last big job failed and who's coming over to a bigger job? Or do we want the right manager this time? You can't keep going through managers, you just can't do it. We need some stability, but we need the right guy. The problem is, the two right guys run two of our neighbours either side of the, the um, East Lanks Road. One's running Liverpool and one's running Manchester City. They're the two guys that we really want. Failing that, I don't know who we go for next, but it's got to be best in class. Who that is, I don't know, but Graham Potter, I'm not sure it's for me. Maybe in three years' time, yes, if he goes somewhere and pulls up some trees at a place other than Brighton, yes, maybe, but now, no, 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 no. So, Jim, uh, Simon, should I say, Simon, I think you got it right this time, I think you was on the money, but no. If he couldn't cope with the board at Chelsea, he doesn't know what he's walking into at Man United, honestly, he really doesn't. Anyway, based on the last 10 or 12 years, that is, let's hope it improves.